it's so beautiful today. Finally warm, sunny weather. And look, this is our cherry that we planted three years ago. And it's blooming. So that's amazing. Okay. And look at this beauty. This big cherry tree also in full bloom. It's wonderful seeing all the trees waking up. The first thing they do is showing the world how pretty they can be. There are so many blossoms. And it's even more exciting to see those shrubs that we planted in bloom now. Their flowers are usually inconspicuous and different, but it's a good sign that there may be fruits later in the year. Various gooseberries, currants, honeyberries and many more. We'll see how it goes, but we are hopeful. And more new flowers are starting to show up. I planted these last autumn. These are fritillaries, I think. I never heard the word before, <laughs> but I've seen them before. And it's so nice to have more different kinds of flowers in our garden. And above me, except the sun, I don't see anything, but there should be a decorative <laughs> plum tree there. It is there and it's very pretty as well. And we have new flowers here. They are very small. These are European Pasque flowers. It's the name same as the protected ones. Uh, I think so. I don't know if it's exactly the same name, but something so, like that. <laughs> yeah, so at some locations there are very similar flowers and they are endangered. So they are protected. You can't take them. And this is very similar and you can plant these ones. So Tommy planted four of them, but only two of them are in bloom. This one and here hidden yeah. is another one. Mm -hmm. And here this one is dead. <laughs> so there is nothing. And here there are just leaves. Yeah. So this one will bloom next year, hopefully. But there should be five. So oh, five. Okay. The fifth one is probably... Here, here. There are leaves. Uh -huh. And maybe a flower is coming as maybe, well. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. This year I just want them to survive and next year hopefully they will uh, bloom more. Yeah. We love when our new shrubs start to blossom. And look at this black thorn. It's blooming very nicely. So yeah. we like it very much. <laughs> A lot of shrubs are blossoming for the first time since we planted them, yeah. which is really exciting. It is. And finally, daffodils are shining in the sunny weather because before it was overcast all the time. And it's nice to see bees and bumblebees uh, finally making use of them. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. when it was cold, they were still hidden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw a few bumblebees here and there, but honeybees they were still sleeping and relaxing at home. <laughs> but now when it's warm, they are everywhere. Yeah, everything is buzzing. We have a new element in our garden here. Last year we planted some uh, low growing shrubs. We created this space and this will be the entrance into this uh, area. Mm -hmm. We planted here one clematis plant. Peter's mom planted it somewhere else in the yard, but we wanted to move it here so that it could climb on the structure. And the idea is that we will plant a second one here and they will meet halfway. Yeah, so we are looking forward to that. And it's so interesting here in this area, there were tomatoes last year and we were mulching around them. And now there are quite a lot of flowers only like these weedy ones. Wildflowers. Wildflowers. But it still looks like it's changing to what we want the field to look like. More like a meadow, yeah. More like a meadow, yes. So we like this. It's 
the warmest day of the year so far, so we don't feel like working much today. <laughs> but let's do at least something. Yeah. Last week we wanted to start planting potatoes, but we realized that the soil is really hard to work because we wanted to create a new garden bed. And so we bought a new helper. We put it together now, which wasn't the easiest, but it wasn't too bad either. We spent one or two hours on it probably. Mm -hmm. and, and what is it? So according to the box, it's called Petrol Garden Tiller. Mm -hmm. Here in Czech we call it something like Garden Cultivator. So uh, it should work the soil deep enough to plant potatoes, hopefully. <laughs> It's not easy getting there on our property, which is very not even. <laughs> okay, we are here, so let's start. This is the future garden bed where yes. we want to plant the potatoes. Yeah, we had a big pile of mulch here, which we moved over there. And we want to transform this into a potato garden bed now. Yeah, but now it looks like this. Yeah. So hopefully we will make it better. Yeah. So first I need to do this. Now here, press three times. And now this part, which is made for right-handed people. I don't know if I will be able. Like it's working! Yay! That's great! <laughs> I love it! It's still a nice exercise, <laughs> even with this machine. Yeah. But it did something, so that's nice. It looks better than it did before. Yeah. Although it's not very deep only worked uh, the surface of the soil so I think we are going to remove this thing uh, which you use to set up the depth and if you remove it then it should go even deeper mm -hmm. so we'll go deeper and slower I think yeah I think we are done. We did it twice more, going back, which is more powerful, it seems. And this is what the soil looks like now. So I don't think we would be able to do this manually. So I'm glad we bought it. <laughs> yeah, and it looks good, I think. Yeah, it looks really well worked. We are now creating furrows where we will plant the potatoes. It's still not very easy, <laughs> but that's how it is. You it's have to work to have a big harvest. It's at least possible. <laughs> it wasn't possible before when we tried working with the soil. Yeah. So I'm glad it's going somehow and I'm sure it will be great. I hope we will have the biggest harvest of potatoes so far. I hope so too. In the meantime, I am burning branches that we pruned and there are a lot of them. <laughs> so, but it's going quite fast. It's all dry by now, right? Yeah, yeah. I quite like doing this when it's going and when I'm not burning the property. <laughs> so hopefully this will be as successful as always. Oh. Can you see me? Woo! No. <laughs> now yes. And everything is burned. It went very well, so I am happy about that. Four furrows are here in the meantime. 
and I love it. I wish I loved it as well <laughs> doing this, but I'm glad I'm basically done. How do you feel? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. This year we have two different kinds of potatoes, two different varieties. We got both of them from Peter's parents. These ones have uh, huge sprouts already, <laughs> so I think they are ready to be planted. Yeah. <laughs> they look very ready. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind this is, but this seems to be store-bought. It's called Mozart mm -hmm. and it's uh, Dutch potatoes. Why not Austrian when it's Mozart? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what kind is it? I don't mean the name, but... Type B. Type B, yes. okay. <laughs> and it's um, a late variety. Mm -hmm. So you harvest them later in the year and they are good for storing mm -hmm. over winter. Yeah, and you said they are red. Yes, they are red. Okay, so that's different. Mm. We like something different yeah. every year. Right, so I'll start with them maybe. Okay. Like this far maybe, or more, right? Like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. But then we probably don't have enough space. <laughs> so maybe put them closer? We are almost done. At the end we figured out that the distance should be about 30 centimeters, or I guess one foot. And we will have only a few of them left, so it was the right amount and the right uh, space for it, it seems. Maybe we will make one more line for the rest on the side, just so we wouldn't have to throw them out. And then we'll be done. Looks very good. Yeah, only a few left. I made one more row. And of course it was calculated perfectly because I used all the potatoes and it's exactly full. Wow, <laughs> you are amazing. Right. <laughs> I keep saying that, but it's so true, so it's, it needs to be repeated. <laughs> sure, why not? Keep repeating it if you want. So I'll just cover it with soil now. Mm -hmm. It's quite a big area, I really like it. Yeah. Compared to the size of the garden beds we have over there, it's uh, like 50% extra yeah, new space. Yeah, exactly. And the last step is to water the potatoes. So, we are almost done. Which is great, because the sun is slowly going down. Yeah, we spent a lot of hours here. I just woke up and I immediately had to run outside because this is quite a unique view for me. The sun here on this flower garden bed shines only in the morning, then it's in the shade the whole day. And it looks so pretty. I love that there are all colors. There are two different quince trees. And one is pink, one is more red. There are these blue grape hyacinths. And there in the background, Forsythia, yellow. And these ones, I forgot the name. They are dark purple. Hellebores, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And all the green is here as well. So we are only waiting for these two tulips, <laughs> they are coming and they will be yellow, I think, as well. So it's amazing here. I love this time of the year, it's so cool and there is this nice smell from the flowers, so it's even more pleasant to be here. And here... These are our 
geraniums mm -hmm. or per pelargonias and they are getting ready for sunshine here. We need to be careful because Tommy was growing them inside and they need to get used to the sunshine. Yeah, I already burned them immediately. You can see some dead leaves. But new ones are growing and those ones look stronger because those already grow grew outside. Yeah, and it's really interesting how delicate the plants are mm -hmm. when they grow inside. And then you bring them outside. It was cloudy and yeah. not much sunshine, but still they got burned so fast. Yeah. So now they are here, I don't know, maybe for, for one hour in the morning sun that is not that strong mm -hmm. and then we will put them in shade again they will put themselves in shade as the sun will go behind the house yes so of course this is carefully calculated and here we have more tulips these are more into the orange mm -hmm. color so orange color is here in our yard as well so we have everything <laughs> And new ones are starting to grow here. We have so many tulips mm -hmm, yeah. and they come and go gradually. So it's amazing. There is always something. Yeah, they keep blossoming for like two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the first plum trees that blossom this year. So it's an earlier variety, I guess. Or it's warmer here in the yard mm -hmm. because there are these walls and they are like protection against cold weather, I would say. So it looks very pretty. We have a new house here for loner bees. Is that the correct term? Wild bees, maybe in English. Okay, we call them loner bees and they are these different varieties of bees. There are so many of them and we've seen quite a lot of various bees mm -hmm. so black ones tiny ones, ones huge tiny ones. ones huge ones yes it's so cool so they love such homes so hopefully they will come uh, into this home as well i'm pruning our peach tree this kind of tree like peaches apricots are pruned later in the year compared to others so they recommend doing it when uh, it already blossoms and this tree creates so many branches it's interesting yeah there are quite a lot yeah it looks pretty with all the blooms yeah they are pink so different yeah different than all the white blossoming ones yeah i'm going to use these ashes from yesterday we were looking on the internet what plants like ashes and we found out raspberries would be really happy to have ashes so i'm going to bring this to them so they are happy we have a lot of raspberries here and there as well so i'm going to spread it here or i should put it to the roots, right? Spread the ashes. Yeah. And on the internet, they promised <laughs> that it would be such a growth explosion that we wouldn't be able to pick all the delicious, big, sweet raspberries. So right next to the plant. I feel like I used quite a lot of ashes. So the raspberries should be happy and we need to water them so the ashes can go into the soil. You know? Yeah, start working. Yeah, start working. We have one more helper. This thingy, it looks like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so hot air will blow out of here and it should destroy weeds for example this thistle and it's eco-friendly because it's only very hot air no mm -hmm. chemicals no anything no roundup yeah 
so it should destroy the plant. Let's go. Something is happening. You can see it's a bit brown. And the result doesn't have to be immediate. So there is only a little brown spot <laughs> here. But in a few days the plant should die. So we will keep you informed if it's working. But it should. If it's a big one, we might need to repeat it a few times, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll have to test it and we'll see how it works. Yeah, we'll see. So the temperature of the air blowing out of this should be 650 degrees Celsius. So that's very, very hot. <laughs> and like it should destroy the whole plant because, for example, thistles have very deep roots and this should work. Yeah, it's impossible to dig them out, they grow back. Like it's possible, but it's very hard and usually the root breaks and when a part stays in the soil, a new plant will grow. That's what I've just said. Yeah, so I wanted to explain. Next time we shall tell you if the miracle weed destroyer works or we will at least attempt to destroy more annoying thistles. But for now, let us relax for a bit and enjoy the sunshine surrounded by all the beautiful flowers. We need to take it all in. It's fascinating how nature can create such pretty creations. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed our video and see you guys next time. Bye!